Welcome back mathematicians. In this video we're going to look at two more examples where we solve quadratic equations by factoring. So the first equation is x squared minus 25 is equal to zero. What we notice is that the right side is equal to zero which is a is good that's what we want and the left side is x squared minus 25 so should we, we should try to factor that. So some of you might notice or catch on to the fact that this can be rewritten as x squared minus 5 squared and so the left side is actually a difference of squares. So a difference of squares expression means that we can factor it as x plus 5 times x minus 5. So now we set both of these factors x plus 5 equal to 0 and x minus 5 equal to 0 and solve. We subtract 5 to both sides for the first equation to get x equals negative 5 and add 5 to both sides of the second equation to get x equals positive 5. Rewrite this one more time as a list. I have negative 5 and positive 5. Again, I highly encourage you to go back and replace x, the x variable, with both of these values one at a time to verify that the left side is equal to 0, uh, so that way you're checking your answer. Now we have 3x squared plus 20x plus 12 is equal to 0. Now a lot of, a lot of people I work with tell me that the three causes them lots of problems. So they run into difficulty factoring the left side whenever they have a value there that's not equal to one. So what I'm gonna do is go through what's called the factor by grouping method to demonstrate a step-by-step -step procedure on how you can factor the left side. So the first thing you'll wanna do is multiply A times C. So in other words, find the product of A and C. So A is three and C is 12. So this is three times 12, which is equal to 36. Next, what I like to do is create what I call a factor sum table. So I wanna find the factors and sum of these numbers. So in other words, I wanna find the factors of 36 and I want the sum to be equal to 20, which is my B value. So I'm looking for the sum of those factors to be equal to 20. All right, so what are some factors of 36? Well, six times six is 36 and six plus six is equal to 12. Well, that 12 is not what I want. I'm looking for 20. That's my goal. Okay, well, I keep trying. I increase one of those values. So let's try 12 times three, but 12 plus three is equal to 15. So that doesn't work either. Now let's try 18 times two and 18 plus two is 20. So I've, I've achieved my goal. 18 and two are the two numbers that I'm looking for because uh, you can multiply those two to get 36 and you can add them to get 20 which is what I want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to break apart the 20x. So watch, I've got 3x squared plus 18x plus 2x plus 12 is equal to zero. And again, I got the 18 and the two from my factor sum table. And it doesn't matter which order you, you, you write them in. And again, I, I can do this because 18x plus 2x is equal to 20x. So I haven't changed the quadratic expression on the left side, just kind of change how it looks. Well, what I need to do next is factor the greatest common factor from these first two terms. So these first two terms, I wanna factor the greatest common factor, which is three X. That means the other factor will be X plus six. I wanna do the same process for the second two terms, but I have a goal in mind. I want one of the factors to be X plus six. So then my question is, well, what do you factor from 2x plus 12 so that one of your factors is x plus 6? And the answer is positive 2. So now I look at this and I say, okay, I've got two terms, one term and two terms here. And I need to find the common factor of those two terms. And the common factor from those two terms is x plus 6, leaving you with the other factor being 3x plus 2. So now you've successfully factored that expression 3x squared plus 20x plus 12 using a grouping method. So now we wanna use the zero product property, which allows us to set both of these factors equal to zero and solve. So x plus six equals zero, subtract six to both sides, you get x is equal to negative six. And three x plus two is equal to zero, subtract two to both sides, you have three x is equal to negative two, and then divide by three, to get your final answer of x equals negative two thirds. Now again, one more time, I'm, I like writing it as a list, so it's going to be x equals negative six and negative two thirds. All right guys, good luck.